You are listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. I'm Elena Paventa, Executive Communication Coach and TEDx Organizer. With each episode, I'll share with you communication tips and ideas from top business leaders to help you excel in your career. Welcome, welcome everyone to the next episode of Ideas and Leaders podcast. Today I'm speaking with Jeffrey Klubeck. He's a business coach and consultant. He focuses on how to make businesses and entrepreneurs thrive while not losing a sense of what makes company outstanding leadership. And this is what our podcast is all about. So I'm very happy to have uh, Jeff today on Ideas and Leaders. Hi, Jeffrey. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me. I, I'm really, really grateful to be here. I'm excited for the conversation. So uh, Jeffrey, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do? So I know that you're a business coach and uh, how did you start this career? And also, what do you help your customers with? Oh, wow. Great question. Um, you know, I, I always tell people that what I do is I wake up every day and I figure out how I'm going to deserve my wife and kids. I'm a very lucky man. I'm married with three kids and uh, I'm so lucky. I, I constantly feel like I want to deserve that. So, so that's what I do. I figure out how to deserve my wife and kids. But what that does is it gets me out of bed helping people. So what do I help people with, right? In one word, it's communication, right? And so like, if, have you ever heard this where people say the niches the riches are in the niches, you know, specialization, pare down, focus. Well, my niche, my focus is communication. I'm, an, I'm a retired adjunct professor of communication. I taught public speaking and all of the communication modules for 20 consecutive years on the heels of the master's. So uh, I have a master's in communication, retired adjunct professor. So I started my personal professional growth business in 2006-07. Right. So I've been coaching, consulting, training, speaking, and now I've added writing books. I've written a couple of books. So I'm just adding all of these different services for personal professional growth, coaching, consulting, training, speaking, keynotes, you know, facilitation, things of that nature. So, you know, if you had to break it down further, I help people with engagement, getting people engaged in what they're doing right? Like yeah. clear and excited about where they're headed and what they're doing and what they want. So engagement. And then I help people with motivation. Okay. Um, external motivation, like selection of strategies, tactics, resources, and material pursuits sometimes, right? But then internal motivation, right? Mindset, you know, uh, uh, habits, patterns, beliefs, conditioning, etc. And then finally, um, the area I'm perhaps most passionate about, which is the biggest need, I think, in the world is accountability. So engagement, motivation, and accountability. If I can get you excited about what you want, give you the strategies, get you out of your own way, and then get you willing to be counted, you're going to get better results. So if you're seeing visually, motivation plus accountability equals results. That's that's kind of what I'm putting out there into the world. Oh, great. You have very holistic approach and yeah. uh, you're doing from many different sides. I love it. I love it. So um, every, very often on our podcast on ideas and leaders, we are speaking about leadership. And every time we speak about leadership, uh, leadership, it comes to self-leadership. So in order to manage our businesses in order to manage people, to lead people, to lead teams. We need to start with ourselves first. And I think mm -hmm. that this is what you help your clients a lot with. So do you see that this problem, this challenge within your clients that very often we are the ones who are standing in our own way? Yeah, I would, I would take it a step further and suggest that every job is an inside job, right? And, and, and one of the things that I'm passionate about is the concept of integrity. It's a book that I wrote and I came out with earlier in the year in April, and uh, it's a model that I'm introducing. But the idea is what I'm trying to do with the integrity game is make it fun and easy to look within. So what happens is when this happens in leadership, this happens in accountability, this happens in motivation, et cetera, is, is people look outside and accuse others of what they themselves are guilty of. Does that make sense? 
So when somebody says, oh, there's no accountability in the world, aha, maybe you need some more accountability in your world, right? When somebody says, oh, that person's out of integrity or that person has no integrity, aha, maybe you notice that because there's some work to do on your own. So a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what integrity is all about. When I ask people, how many of you believe you have integrity? Everybody here is how many of you think yourself to be a good person? right? So everybody's going to raise their hand. But the truth is, we're all a little out of integrity, up to a lot of out of integrity. And to your point, I think one of the best paths to being an effective leader, an attractive leader, uh, attractive, effective, attractive, effective leader is self-leadership, is knowing and, and, and like being a product of the product. Is just walking around and if somebody looks at me and says, ooh, that person manages themselves. That person's careful about what they say. That person seems to have purpose. That person seems to set goals. That person's effortlessly said no to that thing because they're very clear on what else they're doing. Uh, you know, this, so we want to be a product of the product, right? If we want to be attractive and effective as leaders, we need credibility. We need fidelity. I'll tell you a quick story that really was instrumental in my life. It's about like the Dalai Lama who's going to save the day, right? There was this kid who was killing himself with sugar, sugar, sugar. And the mom was going crazy, like stop eating sugar. The kid wouldn't stop. Mom tried everything. Nothing would work. Finally, in a fit, she says, if I took you to the Dalai Lama and the Dalai Lama himself told you to stop eating sugar, would you stop? The kid's like, yeah. So she sells everything and they get this three month trip to go to Tibet or whatever and, right, and hang out with the monks. And there's this like, temple it's like a thousand steps of stairs right and so the mom and the son they go they go they go and they wait in line for hours and finally they're in front of the the dalai lama and he says can i help you and she says yeah my son's killing himself just tell him not to eat sugar and he says well you got to come back in 30 days and she's like what no way i sacrificed everything to get here i have nowhere to go we have nothing left 30 days i don't know how he's like i understand what you're saying but you must come back in 30 days. you got to be kidding me i thought you were the dalai lama the kids here just tell him She's like, I understand, I understand, I understand. You got to come back in 30 days. So 30 days later, she found a way, of course, right? We always find a way. And she's in line, in line, in line, gets back. Hey, do you remember me? Yes, I do. You know, you told me to come back in 30 days. And he looks at the kid and says, stop eating sugar. And she goes, couldn't you, what was so hard about that? Couldn't you just do that 30 days ago? Why did you, and he, and he says, ma'am, prior to your visit, I myself had had sugar. And I needed to go 30 days without sugar before I could look your son in the eye and tell him not to have sugar. So the fidelity, the integrity, the credibility, right? In other words, you, you, I don't believe in leadership by force, coercion, manipulation, misinformation. The dark, there's dark side ways to get people to do stuff, but I don't believe in any of that. I believe in leading with love, leading with vulnerability, leading by example, leading by getting people engaged, motivated, and accountable in healthy, non-threatening ways. So there you have it. Yeah, yeah, I love, I love the story. And also I think that what you mentioned that we see in others, we notice in others what we actually were lacking ourselves. I think that very often we have it with kids and uh, from what I hear uh, with people and what I experience myself with my daughters, that every time we notice something that irritates us, uh, we're like, yes, I'm doing it myself. <laughs> so I think that uh, definitely, definitely we need to. Well, and kids are smart. Yeah. After a while, they'll call you out. Say, what about you, dad? Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. then you have to say something like, "Well, I'm telling you because I don't want you. I want you to be better than me. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> don't make the mistakes I make. You know, it's too late for me, but you still have a chance." And all these weird rationalizations, right? Yes, yes, we can do this with children, but with grown-ups, yeah. Well, when we're leading teams, we cannot, <laughs> we cannot do this. I'm doing this. For well, you. yeah, we need new, we need different techniques. Yeah. We need different different approaches, different strategies, and it's not just you know different for our kids than it is for our teams it's different for every member of the team now yeah. some people you know if it's a good team then it'll have some analyticals and some persuader promoters it'll have some supporters and some drivers it'll have you know what i mean it'll have yeah. you you follow from a behavioral style and assess behavioral assessments perspective so when i'm doing public speaking i never just say six i'll say six half a dozen 10 minus four, seven minus one, three times two. We as leaders need to be ready to communicate to the listening of our team. 
We cannot rely on one size fits all communication. There's diverse different attitudes, values, beliefs, personal and past experiences. Um, we don't know if our team members, you know, if their parents are failing, if their kids are in trouble at school, we don't know if their siblings are struggling. We don't know. So one thing I can tell you for leaders is, is the curse, the curse of knowledge is when we have become so familiar with something that we forgot what it's like not to know. And if we forget what it's like not to know something, we're going to make mistakes when we're communicating. We're going to choose encoding. We're going to choose language and terms like jargon. And uh, right, we're going to skip over things. And it's clear in our head, but we're not saying it out loud. Or what we say out loud is in a language that our audience can't understand. So you know, one thing for leaders is, is have many ways to explain what you need to explain and be patient with the diversity that exists on your team. Yes, definitely. Those are all... Great tips, great tips for leaders in terms of communication, because, uh, yeah, communication is everything in leadership. We need to communicate our values. We need to communicate goals. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, definitely people come first. And what, also coming back to self-leadership. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when uh, people, they kind of uh, get their own way and they... Uh, maybe lack motivation or or they don't know what what is the next step um the it happens very often within uh, people in business but also pe people in in uh, the corporate world so what to, what would you recommend for people who are kind of lacking clarity and la lacking motivation yeah well it's as easy as it is difficult are you ready yeah, yeah, it is. It, 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 it yeah, must yeah. be difficult. Here, here, well, it, it's, but it's easy. Here's the thing. This is what it's all about. It's as easy to understand as it is difficult to do, which is very simply, if I only had one answer to your question, it was declare, decide, declare what you want. Yeah. If you just decide what you want, everything else that's going on in your life should be at least a little bit clearer. Does this help me or hurt me get what I want? Does this move me toward or away from what I want? Who else wants what I want? Does anybody else want anything close to what I want? You, you, once, so, so I'll, I'll tell you in the psychological literature, right? Um, there's a term called reticular activation, right? which is the phenomena like that has been popularized, are you ready, by law of attraction. Have you heard oh, law of yeah, attraction, yeah. right? The secret. Okay. <laughs> the secret, right? Well, guess what? I got news for the secret. It's no secret, okay? <laughs> it's been studied in the psychological literature forever. Here's what I'm getting at. Elena, um, maybe you know, do you remember the first car? What was the first type of car? I'll tell you, for me, it was a Volkswagen Bug. For you, what was the first car you ever drove? Oh, my God. It's, well, it was Volkswagen as well. <laughs> was it? Was it a, a, was it a bug, really? A Volkswagen no, bug? no, no, a different one. A different like one. A I don't Passat remember the model, Jetta. but okay, yeah, oh, Jetta. Right. It well, was it, Jetta, yeah. Jetta. Okay. Well, do you remember? Maybe don't you didn't remember it was a Jetta, but do you remember that once you got your Volkswagen Jetta? Oh my God! There's a white one. Ooh, there's a black one. Ooh, there's a good. Did you start to notice all the other Jettas on the road? Yeah, definitely. Okay. It's but they were all on the road the day before you got yours. The reason that you noticed the others on the road now is because you had a very detailed and specific experience. And so now brains are pattern wrecking, pattern recognizing mechanisms, right? Brains are like, does it match or not match? You know, processors, right? So the same way that you recognize all the Jettas on the road, as soon as you have one, guess what? As soon as you tell yourself vividly and clearly what you want, now you're going to start to recognize all these ways to go get it. But before you tell yourself what you want, everything looks confusing and doubt, doubtful and unsure and shaky and I don't know, or there could be something right in front of your face, but your brain won't see it because you haven't told it what it's looking for yet. Yeah, yeah. So I remember when I was a little girl, we had this game that if you see uh, 10 women in a red dress, then something will happen. And we would you know, could do all those wishes in our heads that, oh, I want this, I want that. And then 
suddenly all women were wearing red dresses <laughs> and we're like one two three four five six seven and uh, yeah so this is exactly exactly what you say uh, it works like this that if we want to to notice something if we pay attention to it then actually it happens and we, we see it but um how to okay so how to kind of operationalize this for people yes. who are more you know numbers oriented and they say okay don't you know believe in secrets so what exactly do i need to do right. so i set a goal and what next yeah well um i have attempted to operationalize this uh, with the integrity game the the integrity game is a model that I created, it's a new brand promise, right? And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's leadership and it starts with self lead, but an individual can go through it for themselves. A one person can play the integrity game for themselves. A team can play the integrity game or an organization can play the integrity game. And very simply, the integrity game is my effort to make it tangible to increase one's integrity, to make it material, tangible, actionable, procedural so i want to take integrity away from this like this this word that's a concept that people misuse when accusing other people of not having any you follow and i want to take it out of this thing that's misused or not understood fully and into people's daily lives into people's daily careers and businesses so what it is is a 10 point model and the idea is there's like so in other words here let me back up a little bit Elena, integrity, people think integrity is like honesty or being a good person. When I'm doing public speaking and I ask people, how many of you believe you have integrity? Everybody raises their hand. Now, and I joke with them, though, I say, all right, keep your hand up and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear not to shoot the messenger because the whole point of the integrity game keynote is to expand people's understanding of what integrity is and to start the process of looking within for more integrity looking within, do I have it? How do I get more? How could I teach other people to get more, live with more? And then what, and then focus on everything else that comes from living with more integrity. But most people only use the word integrity when they're accusing somebody else of not having it, right? So I'm curious, how many people are uh, actively, consciously working right now to increase their own integrity? Nobody, right? But what would happen to the world if 10% of the world was working on their own integrity? What would happen if 50% of all leaders worked on their own integrity and then knew how to help others build their integrity? So integrity is misunderstood. The first thing we wanna understand about it that I'm trying to add to the whole game is integration, right? When I ask people, what's the de hang on, what's the definition of integrity? What do you think integrity is? Who am I to uh, accuse you of not having integrity, right? Well, let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. Elena, most people say either do what you say you're going to do, right? Do what you say you're going to do or do the same thing when somebody's watching that you would when nobody's watching. Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah. Right? And the, 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 you, you, that makes sense to us, right? Yeah, we wouldn't disagree with that. So what I love about these things is that when we, when we, when we be our word, when we are, when we do what we say we're going to do, watch this, I'm going to slow down. There's an integration, a coming together of our behavior with our word. And then when we do the same thing, regardless of who's watching, there's a coming together, tell me if this sounds familiar, of our behavior with our values or our morals or our ethics. Does that make sense? So watch this. In both examples, these are the answers I normally get, there's an integration, a coming together of one Thing with another. In both examples, our behavior is one of the ingredients. Yeah. Does this make sense? So, so an integration of word with behavior, an integration of value with behavior is what we believe gives us more integrity. And we would all agree that that, but here's the thing, Elena, this is the fun part, because I like to have fun. If I said to somebody that I was going to drink 18 beers before my podcast interview with you, and then I drink 18 <laughs> beers before my podcast interview with you by virtue of being my word would I be able to claim integrity and you and I both know that the answer is no if it's important to me to be professional if it's important to me to serve others it's important to me that your guests get value out of it does this make sense so if I said I was going to lay on the couch for 16 out of every 24 hours and then I laid on the couch 
for 16 out of 24 hours, would I be able to claim integrity? We all know that the answer is no, but we just said integrity is being our word. It's not, it's part of it, but it's not all of it. Okay. And then without going into any examples, Elena, there are things that I prefer to do when nobody's watching that I wouldn't do when people are watching. And I think that's highly appropriate. And it has nothing to do with whether or not I'm valuable or I have values, morals, or ethics. You know, there's on and on. So in other words, these two things, be your word and do the right thing regardless of who's watching. They're good. They help us understand integration coming together of one thing with another, but they're not complete enough for us to declare either integrity or ideal levels of integrity. So I say all of that to say, I believe there's 10 things that we want to integrate, 10 things that we want to bring closer together to claim greater integrity. And if we do that, we will be out of our own way. Right? I promise playing the integrity game will get you out of your own way. I promise, 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 promise that. And you know, we can talk about the 10 points on the model, but it starts with this first thing. What do you want? What's your purpose? Why are you here? Right? What's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of your life? Most people won't wrestle with that question. Most people won't declare an answer to that question, which means everything else they're doing in their life is not integrated with purpose. So now we're unclear, we're confused, we're unsure, we don't know, we're, we're overwhelmed, we're frustrated, we're, I have to this, I have to that, I have to this, and no, we're blown around like a feather in the wind, right, when we don't have concrete, solid foundation of what's my purpose, why am I here? Now, I'll tell you that one of the reasons people avoid this of choosing a purpose, declaring a purpose, because they're afraid of all the other purposes that they won't get to if I choose this one, right? That's one reason, right? It's kind of like me and proposing to my wife, like, hey, what? what? That means nobody else? I don't, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd say that's a joke, right? It's working out for me, by the way. My point is the people are afraid of committing. People are afraid of permanency. People are afraid to commit to something because what if, well, what am I? You got to get past those things. And, and so for me, last year, what was the purpose in my life? It's different than it is today. Tomorrow, my purpose might be different than it is today. But every day that I don't have an answer to what's my purpose might be a day that I'm out of integrity. Right. Yeah. And so I won't go, I won't go around saying, you know what, I'm out of integrity today. I'll just get mad when I see other people. Right. And that's not a good way to lead myself or others. Right. So there's nine other pieces on the model. And what it means is if we understand the points, right, we can treat them as question sets. And then my job as the coach, the facilitator, the speaker, the leader, the author, the what is to facilitate people understanding what the 10 question sets are, answering, wrestling, and actually arriving at answers to those questions. And then the harder work beyond that is, do my answers empower each other? Do they go together? Do, does my answer to question set number three integrate with my answers to question set number seven? Do my answers to question set number one integrate and support and empower my answers to question set number 10? So, so it's understanding the questions, answering the questions, and making sure the questions align. And what that does is it gives us a structural integrity in our life, career, and business. When, you know, it's like shoelaces, right? Have you, um, you know, what do the shoelaces do? What are, they, what are they doing? They're bringing the left side of the shoe closer together with the right side of the shoe. I'm going to change my background so you can see this. Do you see the laces up in the upper corner right there? Yeah, yeah. Right? For those who so, are watching us on YouTube, they yeah, for the, probably yeah. see, see that as well. Yeah. <laughs> So the idea is these laces aren't tying the shoe. We tie the laces. What the laces are doing is giving it structural support. Uh, the laces are creating integrity. They're integrating the left side with the right side. Why? So the shoe could do what it's supposed to do, what it's made to do, which is stay on our foot, protect our foot, and help us move quicker, better, more effectively than we'd be able to move without right? So if the laces come undone, if the shoe falls off, if you step on a rock, right? Anything that's out of integrity invites other things to be out of integrity. So I'm not claiming 100% integrity. I don't believe in that. We're human beings. What, so do you have integrity is a trick question. The truth is, Elena, we all have some and we all, myself included, need more. The world needs more integrity. 
right? But people have a misunderstanding of what it really is. People only use the word when they're accusing others. Nobody's created a model to help people look within and increase their own integrity to then vibrate that way and then be magnetic and attractive to help other people get out of their own way. And I do believe when it comes to getting out of your own way, like do you see one, two, three, four, five, there's five holes on each side. So when I'm doing the presentation on this, they, I label them. What are the 10 question sets? We mm -hmm. want to bring those together. So yeah. Elena, you, we say that a building has structural integrity when what? When it keeps standing, despite what? The outside forces. So if there's wind, if there's rain, if there's lightning, if there's an earthquake, if a car drives into it, or if a fire goes off inside of it, the sprinklers come on, like regardless of what the outside forces are, if that building keeps standing and keeps doing what it's supposed to do, what it was designed to do, what it was built to do, then we say that building has structural integrity. That bridge has structural integrity, right? doesn't matter how high the tide is, the bridge will keep standing and let a car drive across. Well, why are we any different? Who's investing in their own structural integrity? So that regardless of the pandemic, regardless of the bad apple on my team, regardless of the politics, regardless of the infighting, regardless of the budget, regardless of the political climate, I keep doing what I was built to do. I keep doing what I was made to do. I keep withstanding outside forces because I have the structural integrity to keep leading myself and others. But if I don't declare where I wanna go and I don't take the time to find out where others wanna go, I can't lead anybody anywhere. Yeah, definitely. We need to start with this goal. We need to start with, with the meaning, uh, uh, defining the meaning f for for us, and then uh, set a goal. So, uh, of course, we don't have time to speak about all the ten points. But Correct. I wanted to ask you uh, to sum up maybe the most important points what what do you think we need to do to actually work on our integrity maybe you can just mention a couple of them i know that everything is important but uh, yeah just yeah. to uh, leave us with something that we can actually start doing from today yeah. starting after listening to this episode what can we do to start working on our own integrity yeah I, i'm going to give you a couple of things number one i'm going to remind you that you have to declare what you want. Everything else you're doing is going to be a little bit ineffective without that declaration. So I could say, you know, the second answer is goals, right? Goal setting, right? And as a matter of fact, you know, it's goal setting would be right here. It's the fourth point that I introduce on the model. Goal setting is so important. It gets its own point on the model. You, does that make sense? So when I'm doing coaching with people, I don't say, what's your life purpose? I don't start there. You know, that's too enormous, if you follow. Maybe I'll ask when we're further into the relationship. But when I'm bringing people on board into coaching, the introductory onboarding process that we do is focused on goals, right? And, 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 and the, perhaps you've heard of SMART goal setting, S-M-A-R-T. Well, yeah. I, I changed the model. For me, my goal setting model is S-M-A-A-R-T. So here's the deal. For people that are listening, watching, there's the, this is just brief and you could contact me if you want more support on this, right? But number one, answer this question. How does your life need to be different? How does your life or business need to be different? What are the three most important things that have to be different than they are right now this second? Like this cannot be this way anymore, right? So what's the most pain you're in on a day-to-day -day basis that you want to get out of? Or what's the most pleasure? that you wanna get closer to, but come up with a label for three things. What are the three most important things? You can, you know, it's fun. I joke around Elena. I say, well, you can tell me the 97th most important thing and the 53rd most important thing, but I would prefer that you tell me the three most important things. Now, this is hard enough as it is. No, most people never get asked this question. What are the three most important things that have to be different, right? And then, uh oh deer in headlights. So I came up with a partition to help people get answers to this. A four, a four prong frame, C-I-C-R, CICER, C-I-C-R, change, improve, create, or remove. Those are four forms of different. So either there's something permanent, permanently in my life, it's not going away, but it doesn't look right. I need to change it, okay? Or improve is it's in my life and it does look good. So increase 
invest and prove more of that, please. Like we had two kids, it was going great. Now we have three, right? More of that. So change what isn't good, improve, invest, increase what is good, and then create what's missing and remove what's toxic. Change, improve, create, or remove. So, right? The three most important things that you have to either change, improve, create, or remove. Once you identify the three most important things, now you just answer the following question. What's the greatest thing you could achieve in three months? Or what's the greatest thing you could achieve in six months? That would demonstrate that those things are different or on their way to being different. Now, when people answer that question, what do I want to achieve? We know in smart goal setting, the T in that is for time. So I'll give that to them as a given. I'll say by October 1st or by December 31st, I usually give a three month frame. Right now we're July, right? So if somebody who came on board and I was helping somebody with this, I would say by November 1st, what's the greatest thing you could achieve in your health? What's the greatest thing you could achieve in your relationships, in your finances, in your career, in your, we know what people want. It's predictable. Health, relationships, finance, they want to grow. They want excitement, adventure, novelty, and they want to give back and contribute. We know what businesses need marketing, sales, operations, finance, you, you follow? It, what people want is predictable. We just got to get people to declare what they want, okay? So the time frame is a given, three to six months. Now, whatever the what is that's going to be the goal, it needs to be screened or filtered through SMAAR. So S is specific. We know that be as specific as you can for reticular activation, law of attraction, right? Visualization. But M is the hard part, measurable. People sabotage the measurability because they're they're preempting, I don't want to fail, right? So they make it wishy-washy and vague and, you know, goal setting is run on sentences. And when I'm working with people, so wait, so is the goal this or is the goal that? Because I see three things here in this sentence. What's the real goal? As a matter of fact, if you achieved all three of those things, what would you really achieve? Oh, I would, then that's the goal. You know, so we got to work with people on this because ego defense and self-sabotage, you, 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 right? The, the, the measurability part is difficult. Then a A is achievable. And in the old model, R was realistic. But what I teach is that if we believe we can achieve it, that becomes our reality. Anything that we can conceive, Napoleon Hill says, anything we can conceive, believe we can achieve. Henry Ford says, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you cannot, you are right. So I encourage people, don't ever set a goal that's the Joneses or don't set a goal that you read in a magazine or don't set a goal that you think somebody else is. You have to believe it internally. And as soon as you do, that becomes your reality. But I take people up to the threshold of belief. What's the most you still believe you can do? Okay. So then the R was realistic. But now that I covered realistic with belief and achievable, now what? Right? So the other thing, too, is that with the SMART criteria, Elena, somebody could set a goal of brushing their teeth twice a day. You know, that's not a goal. Hopefully you're already doing that. You don't need me. What do people need leaders for? What do people need coaches for? What do people need personal professional growth services for? Is to change their behavior. So I added an A to the model called ambitious. We know your goal is ambitious if it requires behavioral change. So do you need to decrease any of your current behaviors, increase any of your current behaviors, start something you're not doing at all, or stop the destructive behavior? So if we can identify behavioral change that needs to take place, now you might need some external support. Because left to our own devices, people just keep doing what they always do. So leadership, whether it's in coaching or an agent or a broker or a service provider or a business owner or an entrepreneur or a supervisor, manager, director, we're in the behavioral change business. That's what leaders are to do is to keep people from doing the bad stuff and help people do the good stuff. But what's bad and good, we don't know unless they tell us what they want. And even better, if the people that are following us want the same thing we want, if we could show them the integration, here's what the company wants, here's what I want, and here's what you want. Do you see how it all comes together? If we just, right? And then, so what did I do with the R is reason or reward. Now that you know, we changed it from realistic to like, why, 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 why do you want that? Why else do you want that? Is there any other reason you want that? You know, Simon Sinek says, start with why, right? And that back in my model, the first point on the integrity game is purpose. What's the purpose? What's the why? Does that make, right? So, so this isn't rocket science. Why the, the importance of why has been around forever, but leaders that are trying to lead themselves or others without declaring their big why are going to have more challenge than others. So when it comes to goal setting, decide what needs to be different, Ask yourself what's the greatest thing you could achieve in the next three months that would represent it being different and then 
screen that answer through the SMART criteria. And now there's motivation and accountability built into your goals. And then it's easy on a session by session basis to hold people accountable to the behaviors. Remember, I, when I finally get into coaching with somebody, Elena, if, I, if they say, well, did you do what you committed to doing? And they say, no, I didn't do that. I say, well, what was more important? All oh, this and that and this and that and this and that. It's like, wait a second. I thought we were working on the three most important things. Right. So the, the goal setting process is setting the context of accountability, setting the context of prioritization, setting the I can keep going, but that's that's a, a process that we have for goal setting, which is step number four in that whole integrity game. Yeah, that's but I could start there. That's the thing. I don't have to start with the first thing or the fourth thing or the tenth thing. I can figure out where somebody is at, right? And start yeah. at the right point of entry and then go up or down from there to fill in the rest, right? But when yeah, it comes yeah. to coaching, we start with goals. Yeah, that's a really, really great tip on setting goals. So we need to see the big picture. We need to start with why, and then we need to, to set the goals. And uh, I really like those questions that you mentioned. They are really deep. And I think that our listeners can spend some time after listening to us and really make some notes on what are the three things that you want to change in, in your business or in your life and yeah different. what can you do with this and what goals can you yeah. set smart goals so those are th this is really really great exercise i think that uh, everyone me included will do after after this episode so thank you so much jeffrey for sharing some elements of your of your model of the integrity game i'm oh, sure pleasure. that you have so much more to share so if our listeners uh, want to contact you and to to work with you to to listen to you more to get inspired where can they find you well i, I i'm easy to find you know if you just do a search jeff klubeck right and google all kinds of stuff will come up connect with me on social, send a private message, very easy to find. Um, as far as like a website, you can go to the integritygame.com. We're building that out. I, 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 should, I, I should mention integrity game is kind of new, right? Or you can tell how excited I am about it. For 15, 16 years, I did get a clue. So there's a lot of content and a lot of stuff on G-E-T-A-K-L-U, getaclue.net. But the new brand where we're moving everything towards the new packaging that we're rolling everything out in is Integrity Game. So theintegritygame.com. If you just interact, you can, you can sign up for two complimentary coaching sessions. You can send a message. You could um, learn about the book, The Integrity Game, which is available on Amazon for just, it's under $10, right? But in here, it's a parable, a story, which introduces the 10 questions. And it really gets people going very, very um, harmless and affordable way to get introduced to the integrity game. And as you can see, I've changed my background with all of these brand promises behind me. Um, depending on the recording and when you're listening to this, uh, September 7th of 2022 is the first of 12 weeks that, that represent the 90 day challenge. So if anybody's watching or hearing this and it's after se September 7th, you can still jump in, we'll catch you up, but we're doing a 90 day challenge, 12 consecutive weeks where there's an opening week, an introduction week, the 10 weeks to represent the 10 points on the model, and then a, a, con a concluding week. So it's 12 weeks, there'll be a private Facebook group, people that sign up will get a signed copy of the book and two complimentary coaching sessions with an integrity game certified coach to start working with this. But otherwise, I'm going to be leading people in groups on a zoom through these questions. And each week will be dedicated to one point on the model and people can work on it in between sessions. And the, the 90 day challenge is something I'm really, really excited about. It's the first time we're ever offering it. And I hope every single one of your listeners wants to at least learn about it, if not enroll and participate. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. We will definitely put all the links to your social media uh, website and also to the 90 day challenge uh, under the episode so that our listeners can immediately jump there after listening to our interview. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff, for being on Ideas and Leaders. It was a pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure uh, listening to uh, your, your energy, your motivation. Thank you so much. I'm sure that our listeners really benefited from this episode and have a lot of homework to do after it. Thank you so much. The pleasure was mine, Elena. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. Did you enjoy this episode? 
let me know that you listen by tagging me in your LinkedIn profile and using a hashtag ideas and leaders. See you in the next episode.